guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be all about disappointing products I regret buying. I talk a lot about my favorite products and things I love and things that work for me, and I think it's important every once in a while to share products that didn't work for me for whatever reason. I try to share those in my everyday makeup drawer videos or declutter videos, but every once in a while I like to sit down and dedicate an entire video to products I regret buying or products I just didn't like for whatever reason. So I hope you guys find this video helpful. I do have an entire playlist of these videos on my channel. Channel. So I'll link it in the description box below if you guys are interested and make sure you leave me a comment below Letting me know which products didn't work for you guys Especially if they were like high-end expensive products or hyped up products because I like to hear from you That way I can either avoid those products or take note for future reference. So let's jump into it Okay, let me kick it off with some palettes because I do have a couple to share with you guys So the first one I briefly touched on in my everyday makeup drawer video But I didn't really talk in depth about why I didn't like it or why it was disappointing and I I regret buying it. So it is from NYX Cosmetics and I really enjoy their multi finish shadow palettes. They come with like four colors and each color comes with three different finishes. And this one came in similar packaging so I just kind of assumed it would be the same formula. This one is their ultimate shadow palette in warm neutrals. I feel like I've heard a lot of people actually talk about this one on YouTube as well as one of their favorites. But to be honest with you guys, I just was not impressed by the quality of this palette at all. I really liked the quality of the ultimate ultimate multi-finish shadows. I think they are so high quality. The mattes, the shimmers, the metallics, and this palette kind of has a mix of mattes and shimmers and maybe like one or two metallic shadows in here, but the quality was just okay. It wasn't a terrible palette by any means, but I feel like for the price, I would personally save my money and buy something else. I would not recommend purchasing it to be completely honest with you guys. I just felt like I don't know, the matte shadows weren't extremely pigmented, they weren't extremely blendable, the shimmer shadows weren't very pigmented either, and there are so many other affordable alternatives on the market that are so much better than this palette, especially even from NYX Cosmetics. So I would not recommend this one, I just think it was a disappointing palette in general. But I know some people really like this palette, so it might just be personal preference, I just feel like there are a lot of other worn palettes out there that are so much better than this one. So I just, I'm disappointed in it, I regret buying it, I'm going to declutter it and pass and along with somebody else. So this one is their Perfect Filter Palette in All of You. A lot of people like these and a lot of people rave about them. I actually picked this one up because it was supposed to be a dupe for the Anastasia Subculture Palette, which was not my favorite, but if I had to choose, I would choose the Subculture over this one. I don't think that this one does the Subculture justice. I feel like the Subculture is a beautiful palette. I think a lot of the issue comes with like the blending and the powderiness, but in general, the colors are gorgeous gorgeous, they're super pigmented, and this one really can't compete with that palette. I think the metallic shadows are just really not that pigmented, to be completely honest with you. The only one that I really use in terms of the metallic shadows is like this gold right here, but the rest of them are kind of disappointing. They really don't, you know, apply that great on the eyes. I'll pack them on with my finger and they look okay, but they fade and wear away throughout the day very quickly. The matte shadows are extremely powdery. They remind me of the subculture in that aspect, but they do blend nicely onto the eyes. I'll use like the neutral shadows on the eyes as like a base color or a transition color, but if I go in with like the greens and the blues, they're not very vibrant. I feel like this entire palette in general is just lacking saturation on the eyes. Like when I apply it, I don't get a really pigmented eye look. It just kind of looks lackluster. There are other ones on the website. I don't know if they perform the same or if they perform better, but after my experience with this one, I don't think I'll end up purchasing the other ones. I just feel like there are so many palettes out there that to compete with all of the other ones, you have to be or it has to be like a really good palette these days. Okay, so this is kind of random. I purchased this palette, I think last year, and I ended up returning it, and then I got it again in a boxy charm, and I wanted to give it a second shot because I felt like the first time I tried it, I didn't know if I did all I could to use the shadows to their fullest potential, so I tried it out again, and I completely regret it. I wish that I had just passed it along to somebody else before I even touched it. I can still give it to like a friend or family member who won't mind that I use the shadows, but 
but it's like a second regret. But this one is the Tarte Cosmetics Rainforest of the Sea Volume 2 Eyeshadow Palette. So this one came in a BoxyCharm, and I felt like it was really cool that BoxyCharm included a full-size Tarte Cosmetics palette. I feel like Tarte shadows are so hit and miss for me. I like some of their palettes, and I don't like other ones. The Rainforest of the Sea Volume 2 comes with some really beautiful colors. You get a lot of really great cooler toned neutrals in here. The texture of this palette is so interesting to me. I feel like it is a drier palette, but it's still pigmented and beautiful. So I kind of thought it might be great for like everyday wear to get a really nice, natural, easy makeup look or smoke it out if I want something a little bit more dramatic. I just can't figure out how to work with these shadows. I feel like when I pack them onto the eyes with my finger, they're okay, but they're still not my favorite. But when I use a brush, I just, they don't blend that well. I don't get good color payoff. I don't get you know, a lot of seamless eye looks. I feel like my eye looks are patchy and uneven and unblended, and I just don't like this palette. I tried to make it work again for a second time, and I just think that the Rainforest of the Sea palettes are not for me. Volume 3 is so beautiful. It has like these beautiful like highlight shades in it, so I was tempted to grab it, but I think after using this one, you know, again for a second time, I don't think that this formula is for me. So another Tarte product that I was disappointed in, or another Tarte palette, is the Tardis Pro Glow Highlighting and Contour Palette. I really had high hopes for this one. I felt like I did sufficient research before I bought this, so I thought I was going to like it. I even went into the store and swatched it, and I just thought the colors were beautiful and smooth and pigmented, and I really thought I would get a lot of use out of it. But unfortunately, it's just been sitting in my drawers. I honestly rarely reach for this. I can't remember the last time I even used it, which is so disappointing. It's a beautiful palette, and I don't remember it being super expensive or overpriced or anything like that. I felt like I got uh, my money's worth with like how much product I got, but I never use it. So honestly, I wasted my money completely. I think the contour shade, I just don't cream contour in the first place. I I would never use this one. I think I kind of knew that when I bought it, but this powder shade is beautiful. I think I would reach for it, but I just have other contours in my collection that I reach for on an everyday basis. And I don't know, the highlight shades are really beautiful. And when I swatch them, I'm like, oh yeah, I'll wear those. I'll wear them a lot. And then I put it in my drawer and I never wear it. So I feel like it's a good palette, but I have other products in my collection that I reach for over it. So for me personally, it's not my favorite. I feel like the highlighters are a little bit dry, which is weird because when I swatch them, they don't look dry, but when I apply them to the skin, they don't look, I guess, super flattering. I would reach for like a Becca Cosmetics highlighter or an e.l.f. highlighter or a Makeup Revolution highlighter over these. So I felt like the formula wasn't my personal favorite. I think a lot of Tarte products are more on the dry side, which is usually good for me because I a very oily skin. I love their blushes. I love, you know, a lot of their drier products, but I feel like their highlighters are a little bit too dry for me. It's already gone to waste like long enough just sitting in my collection, so I'm going to pass it along to one of my sisters or my mom and see if they enjoy it more than I do, but I just kind of regret it because it was a more expensive product because it's an entire palette. So I just filmed a video on the best and worst affordable concealers. I will link it in the description box below if you guys are interested in it. But one concealer that was very disappointing is the Ulta Beauty Full Coverage Liquid Concealer. It claims to be waterproof, so I had high hopes for this. I haven't tried a lot of the Ulta Beauty brand, and I did pick up a few products to try out. I kind of want to try more, but I feel like the few products that I've tried have been a miss for me. So if you guys have any favorites from the line, you'll have to let me know in the comments below. I was looking forward to trying this concealer because it says it's full coverage and waterproof. So I thought it would be perfect for me. I have oily skin, so I kind of assumed it would be a great option for me. I wore this one day and I filmed a video and I think I even like commented in the video a few times about how my skin was so oily that day and I did not know why it was this concealer. Every single time I wore it after that, my skin just looked insanely oily around like my under eye area and my nose area where I had applied this. I don't know why or what's in this concealer that makes me look like my skin is the most oily it's ever been, but if you guys have oily skin, stay away from this concealer. It's not ideal for oily skin at all. Another product that is not ideal for oily skin is the Catrice Prime and Fine Smoothing Refiner. I like a lot of their products. I actually have a primer in my collection that I think is good for oily skin, but I think it's targeted toward dry skin, and I did try another one of their mattifying primers that didn't work well for me, so I feel like a lot of the mattifying products are more oily or make my skin more oily, and a lot of 
the hydrating products work really well. So it's kind of weird, but this one is supposed to be a base for an instantly refined, smooth and soft skin appearance. And I feel like it does make your pores and fine lines a little bit smoother, a little bit less noticeable, but I felt like, again, my skin was so oily when I used this product. So this product doesn't claim to be like oil absorbing or waterproof or anything like that, but I just wanted to throw it out there. It feels really smoothing and really nice when you apply it to your skin. And if you struggle with large pores or fine lines, it might be a good option for you, but not if you have oily skin. I think if you have dry skin, you might like it or normal skin, but if you have oily skin, it's just going to make your face look so oily. I do have another face primer that didn't work well for me and they actually sent this one to me, but I wanted to include it in this video because whether or not I'm sent products for free, I will always be honest with you guys and let you know if they don't work for me or if they're disappointing. So this one was disappointing because I really wanted to like it. I feel like when you really want to like a product and it doesn't work for you, it's even more disappointing. And that was the case with this one. It's from Too Faced. It's their Hangover RX Replenishing Face Primer. So this one is made with coconut water, probiotic based ingredients and it's silicone free. I didn't know if this was going to be ideal for my skin type because it doesn't necessarily claim to be mattifying or great for oily skin, but I think I had just recently tried the Smashbox Primerizer, which is like a primer and moisturizer in one, and that one is super liquidy, super moisturizing, and honestly, it's one of my favorites. I used it today. It just makes my foundation go on beautifully, and honestly, I feel like my skin is not as oily when I use that product, so I thought maybe this hydrating primer would work well for me, and it just didn't. It feels really nice when you apply to the skin because it has like a cooling lotion like texture to it and it leaves your skin feeling really refreshed and hydrated and really nice so I feel like if you have like a dry skin day or a bad skin day or you didn't get a lot of sleep this is going to be a really nice primer to apply it almost has like a sticky base so I felt like my foundation was going to cling to it and stay in place all day long even though it was a hydrating primer but I felt like my foundation wore away very quickly and again my skin got super oily throughout the day it also kind of like broke down my foundation. If I was wearing like the Urban Decay All Nighter or the Hourglass Stick Foundation, I felt like it started looking patchy and uneven and it started breaking down around like my T-zone area and my nose and just my chin and it didn't look very good at all with this primer. This primer made my foundation look so bad. So I unfortunately do not like it. It didn't work well for me. I think if you have dry skin, it might be more ideal, but if you have oily skin, I wouldn't recommend this. And if you wear a full coverage foundation, I don't know if it's ideal because it really broke down my foundation so quickly. So this one didn't work for me. This product is from It Cosmetics. It is the Confidence in a Compact Skin Transforming Full Coverage Solid Super Serum and I wear the shade Fair. A lot of people were raving about this on YouTube and doing videos so I actually purchased it to try it out and I just don't like it. I I honestly think I should stop buying It Cosmetics products because I just don't like a lot of them. I love the It Cosmetics CC Plus. It's one of my favorite products ever, and I like their foundation brushes, but I think that might be it. I'm trying to think of other products that I like from them. I feel like I have way more disappointing products from It Cosmetics than I do products that I love. I've decluttered so many over the years because I keep buying them and I keep trying them and they don't work for me. So I feel like I should quit buying them. I don't think they're that they really agree with my skin type, a lot of them. A lot of them are more hydrating. They have um, like serums in them and skincare benefits, which I like, I love. Like their products appeal to me, but they never work and I just never fall in love with them. I don't know, do you guys feel that way too? I feel like I'm probably in the minority. Their brushes though are so good. You can't go wrong with their brushes. Anyways, this foundation comes in a compact, which is kind of interesting. It is like a solid serum as they call it. So you really have to like dig into the product to apply it to the skin. I just used a brush and I would apply it to my skin. I tried using the sponge with it, but I felt like that wasn't as effective. And I don't know, it says right on the package that it's a full coverage solid super serum. It's definitely not full coverage in my opinion. I feel like the coverage is better than I expected. I would say it's probably more of like a medium coverage, but it's hard to build this product up. You can't necessarily layer it on very easily. I feel like you really have to blend it into the skin for it to look its best. And when you do that, it automatically kind of 
of sheers out. So I feel like it's definitely not full coverage in my opinion. It does have a little bit of a scent to it, but their CC cream does and I can deal with it. I think I need to like put myself on an It Cosmetics no buy or something because I just don't find that many products that I love from them. So I just didn't love this one. Okay guys, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful if you were trying to decide whether or not to grab any of these products. So I hope I could kind of sway your opinion one way or the other. Instead of just like bashing the product, I try to share why I personally didn't like it and why you might like it. That way, you know, if something appeals to you, at least you have some info as to whether or not it would work for you instead of me just saying like this is a terrible product. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.